page 24, section entitled, The God of Our Understanding. Before we delve deeply into the process of turning our will and our lives over to the care of God of our understanding, we should work on overcoming any negative beliefs or unproductive preconceptions we may have about the word God. Questions. Does the word God, or even the concept itself, make me uncomfortable? What is the source of my discomfort? Have I ever believed that God caused horrible things to happen to me or was punishing me? What were those things? Our basic text, text suggests that we choose an understanding of our higher power that is loving and caring and greater than ourselves. These simple guidelines can encompass as many understandings of God as there are any members. They don't exclude anyone. If we understand the word God to mean the power of the program, these guidelines fit. If we understand the word God to mean the spiritual principles of the program, these guidelines fit. If we understand the word God to mean a personal power or being with which we can communicate, these guidelines fit. It is essential that we begin exploring and developing our understanding. Our sponsor can help immeasurably in this process. Questions. What is my understanding of a power greater than myself today? How is my higher power working in my life? As important as it is to figure out what our higher power is to us, it is more important that we develop a relationship with whatever we understand that power to be. We can do this in a variety of ways. First, we need to somehow communicate with our higher power. Some of us call this prayer and some of it call it other things. This communication does not have to be formal or even verbal. Second, we need to be open to communication from our higher power. This may be done by paying attention to how we feel, our reactions, and what is going on inside and around us. Or we may have a personal routine that helps us connect with a power greater than ourselves. It may be that our higher power speaks to us or helps us see the right thing to do through our fellow NA members. Third, we need to allow ourselves to have feelings about the God of our understanding. We may get angry, we may feel love, we may feel frightened, we may feel grateful. It's okay to share the entire range of our emotion with our higher power. This allows us to feel closer to the power upon which we rely and helps develop our trust in that power. Questions. How do I communicate with my higher power? How does my higher power communicate with me? What feelings do I have about my higher power? Page 25. As many of us stay clean for some time, we work on developing an understanding of God for ourselves. Our growing understanding reflects our experiences. We mature into an understanding of God that gives us peace and serenity. We trust our higher power and are optimistic about life. We begin to feel that our lives are touched by something beyond our comprehension, and we are glad and grateful that this is so. Then something happens that challenges everything we believe about our higher power and makes us doubt the existence of that power altogether. It may be a death or an injustice or a loss. Whatever it is, it leaves us feeling as though we've been kicked in the stomach. We just don't understand it. We just can't understand it. Times like these are when we need our higher power the most, though we probably find ourselves instinctively drawing away. Our understanding of a higher power is about to undergo a dramatic change. We need to keep reaching out to our higher power, asking for acceptance, if not understanding. We need to ask for strength to go on. Eventually, we will reestablish our relationship with our higher power, although probably on different terms. Questions. Am I struggling with changing beliefs about the nature of my higher power? Describe. Is my current concept of a higher power still working? How might it need to change? As our understanding of a higher power grows and evolves, we'll find that we react differently to what goes on in our lives. We may find ourselves able to courageously face situations that used to strike fear in our hearts. We may deal with frustrations more gracefully. We may find ourselves able to pause and think about a situation before acting. We'll probably be calmer, less compulsive, and more able to see beyond the immediacy of the moment. Section entitled, Turning It Over. The order in which we prepare to surrender our will and our lives to the care of the God of our understanding is significant. Many of us have found that we actually follow the order in the step. First, we turn over our will. Then gradually, we turn over our lives. It seems that it's easier for us to grasp the destructive nature of our self-will and see that it must be surrendered. Consequently, it's usually the first to go. Harder for us to grasp is the need to turn over our lives in the process of that surrender. 
For us to be comfortable with allowing our higher power to care for our lives, we will have to develop some trust. We may have no trouble turning over our addiction, but want to remain in control of the rest of our lives. We may trust our higher power to care for our work lives, but not our relationships. We may trust our higher power to care for our partners, but not our children. We may trust our higher power with our safety, but not our finances. Many of us have trouble letting go completely. We think we trust our higher power with certain areas of our life, but immediately take back control the first time we get scared of things, scared or things aren't going the way we think they should. It's necessary for us to examine our progress in turning it over. Page 26. Questions. What does to the care of mean to me? What does it mean for me to turn my will and my life over to the care of the God of my understanding? How might my life be changed if I make the decision to turn it over to my higher power's care? How do I allow my higher power to work in my life? How does my higher power care for my will in my life? Have there been times when I've been unable to let go and trust God to care for the outcome of a particular situation? Describe. Have there been times when I've been when I have been able to let go and trust God for the outcome? Describe. To turn our will and our lives over to the care of our higher power, we must take some kind of action. Many of us find that it works best for us to make some formal declaration on a regular basis. We may want to use the following quote from our basic text. Take my will in my life. Guide me in my recovery. Show me how to live. This seems to capture the essence of step three for many of us. However, we can certainly feel free to find our own words or to find a more informal way of taking action. Many of us believe that every day we abstain from using or take suggestions from our sponsor, we are taking practical action on our decision to turn our will and lives over to the care of our higher power. Question. How do I take action to turn it over? Are there any words I say regularly? What are they? 